super flaky, light, chewy, crispy spring onion pancakes. This is a Chinese street food classic. I'm gonna show you how to make spring onion pancakes my way. I've practiced this dough and made this many, many times. It was almost like my lockdown challenge. I tried a few different recipes, a few different rolling and shaping techniques, and this is the one that has worked the best. Now, this dough, you really need to make it the day before. So, the secret number one to the dough is a bit of hot water and cold water. You want to use a mix of both because the hot water almost cooks off some of the protein in the flour, which makes it nice and soft. And then you need the cold water just to help it combine. Another secret is I actually like to use dumpling flour to make this dough. Dumpling flour is closer to what they would use in Asia as a plain flour. So it's slightly lower in protein, which means it will have a softer texture. But if you don't have dumpling flour at home, just use plain flour. So into about 300 grams of plain flour, I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. Mix that all together. I'm using chopsticks because this is very hot water. Don't want to burn my hands. And then I'm going to add all of the hot water in. You're going to see that the hot water almost cooks off some of the flour. It almost bubbles in the very top and that's just because it's very hot. Mix it all together. You're not going to get a cohesive dough just from this. You need a bit of cold to really combine it and bring it together. So once you've mixed the hot water together, it will look something like this. Not a very nice looking dough. Definitely not a smooth dough ball just yet. So with the remaining um, cold water, I'm going to add it in slowly. I don't want to shock it with too much water all at once. So just a little bit at a time. And at this point, I usually like to switch to my hands. So now I've got a ball of dough that looks something like this. Again, still not entirely smooth, but at this point, I'm going to tip it out and knead it for around five minutes, just until I get a nice smooth texture and it springs at the touch. So now that I've been kneading the dough for around five minutes, it springs to the touch. You want to wrap it in some plastic wrap and then set it aside in your fridge for maximum just overnight or three to four hours. You want it to rest and relax because you see all these little gluten strands in the dough. This is going to prevent you from rolling out the dough really, really thin and getting really thin layers of flaky pastry. This is what you don't want. So if you let it rest, all of that will disappear and that flour will absorb all of that liquid. In the middle of our spring onion pancake is a spring onion paste. Now, this flour and oil paste mix of spring onions almost helps the layers lift and separate when you cook them so it gets extra fluffy. What I'm going to do to make the spring onion paste is I've got some plain flour here. This is about 40 or 50 grams. I'm going to season it with salt and pepper, and then I'm also going to mix in some finely chopped spring onions. I like to put in as much spring onions as possible into this dish, so I'm gonna try to fit in five, but these are quite large. If I can't fit in that many, then I'll take some out, or if it's still not enough, then I'll add even more. While I'm chopping, I've got about 50 mils of oil, just plain neutral vegetable oil, just heating up on my stove. So I think three onions is about as much as I can fit into my paste. I've got really large spring onions here. Season it with a pinch of white pepper, generously, and then also a pinch of salt. Be generous with the salt. My oil is nice and hot, so when I bring it over, it is going to sizzle. So be careful when you do this. Let it settle and just cool down for a bit. And remember to use a heat proof bowl. Very, very important. And then just slowly mix this together. You want a nice spreadable paste. So after mixing this together, it looks something like this. And as it cools down, it will kind of settle a bit more and firm up. This spring onion pancake dough has been resting overnight. I'm going to just separate it in half so it's a bit easier to roll out. 
I'm dusting my work surface and my rolling pin with some flour, just so it doesn't stick. And then now I'm going to roll it out into a really big thin square as if you were making cinnamon buns. Same idea. So now that I've rolled it out as thin as possible into a one big thin sheet, I'm going to spread my spring onion mixture all over the middle, leaving a little gap in the end so that the filling doesn't spill over the other side. Now I'm going to roll it into a really thin, almost cigar. Make sure it's really nice and tightly rolled together. It's okay if it slightly tears, it's fine, it's a forgiving dough. Once you've got something like this, I'm going to slice it in half just so I don't need to make one massive spring onion pancake. Do you see all those layers on the inside? That is going to translate into super fluffy, flaky pastry. Now I'm going to roll this into a thin log. And now the trick here is I actually roll it from two different sides. So with one end, I'm going to turn it into a nice coil, stretching the dough at the same time. And then from the other side, I'll do the same thing. I'll stretch, I'll tuck it in, so it looks something like this. And then I'm going to flip it like this, press down, now, if you want to take an extra step, you could let this rest for another half an hour up to an hour. This is how the street vendors would have it already pre-made and just resting on the side. So every time they cook a new spring onion pancake, they'll just roll out an already coiled piece of dough. But if you don't want to wait, it's okay because you've already been waiting a day or maybe already a few hours while the dough has been resting, then you can do what I'm doing. You can very delicately flour your hands and the work surface and start to press down on this little spring onion pancake. Spread it to the thickness or the thinness that you desire. If you want a thicker one, you don't have to flatten it out as much. If you want it slightly thinner, then you can grab your rolling pin and roll it into a thinner pancake. And as I said, it's absolutely fine if some of the spring onion fat spills out. That's all going to cook away. To cook these spring onion pancakes, I'm just heating up a frying pan with a little bit of oil in the bottom. So in a hot pan, I'm going to delicately lower the pancake into the frying pan. And then you want to press down with your spatula. And then you just want to pan fry them till they're golden brown on both sides. Something else you can do to get the super crispy layers is actually use two wooden spatulas and almost break up the spring onion pancake. There's no gentle way to do this, but you can see all those layers. And that's it. Ooh. Did you see all those layers? Do you see that? My favorite part of every video, the taste test. So eating spring onion pancakes, it leaves your hands greasy. That's what it is, is it's street food. You're looking for the flakiness, the crispiness, and of course, all those spring onion bits. So let's tear one apart and see. hot, flaky, chewy dough. Well, I'm gonna go eat this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and let me know what is your favorite pancake-like street food in your country or where you're coming from. Is it a roti? Is it a parata? Is it a flatbread? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time on Flavor Fridays.